Okay. <laughs> Wow, I feel like my life has changed a lot since my last video, which was somewhere in the icy, frozen north of Europe. This here is my little apartment that I've been staying in, in Poland, and I'm gonna show you around a little bit, but today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I haven't done a Q&A video in over a year and a half, and my life has changed a lot since then. So I had you guys ask me all of your questions over on Instagram, and you gave me a lot to think about. Are you sad that you won't be living in the USA? Anything new in your romantic life? Where do you see yourself at 40? Is Everest on your list? As I get ready to run an ultra marathon. Okay, so um, before I go into the questions, I just wanna show you a little bit of the place that I've been staying in. This is like not my permanent new home by any means but it's just like a temporary base that I've created while I search for my new home. So I just want to show you one thing. I don't think I've ever shown you this before, or maybe I have, but uh, this is my pride and joy. Thank you guys for making it happen. Okay, first question of the day. Alexandra is asking, how are you really? I like to start with these questions because they just kind of set the tone, right? So I am really good actually, yeah. I, I feel like I'm at peace in some way that I haven't been in a very long time, maybe never. And life is good. I'm feeling really, really good about the future. Okay, so a tiny little bit about this race that I'm about to go run, just so you know what I'm doing. It's a 100K, it's like 60 something miles race in the mountains of Poland with almost 5,000 meters of elevation gain. It's a non-stop race. It's my second 100K ultramarathon and I am terrified because it's supposed to rain the whole time and I hate the rain. I hate the rain. Anyway, I guess by the end of this video, you'll, you'll know whether I made it to the finish line or not. Hiking After 40 is asking, are you sad that you won't be living in the USA? You know what? Whoever said I wasn't gonna live in the USA? I don't know, I might do at one point in my life. I'm 33 and a lot could change in the next 50 years of my life, 60 years of my life. You know, I know this may sound really, really silly, but I'm trying to like figure out a cute outfit for my run. And I know this probably sounds ridiculous because I'm supposed to be running a race and I'm not going to a, a, a fashion show, but you, you, you wanna look a little bit cute. You want your colors to match, you know? Next question, Coltergeist. What is your perception of Americans? Do we deserve all the hate we get? I personally love Americans. I mean, I know this is a huge generalization, um, <laughs> but I genuinely, genuinely love like the American spirit. There's something that I've seen in most Americans that I met, or at least a huge chunk of Americans that I met to make a generalization like this, especially in the West. Like people in the States just seem to have this like natural confidence in themselves, you know? Like they live and let live. Like this idea of individual freedom is so, like it runs so deep in the American mindset, generally speaking. And I just love that because Europeans don't have that as much. <laughs> These two colors together, right? That's nice. Speaking of clothes, if you're looking for a really cozy hoodie or t-shirt with some very cool messaging on it, this is my merch. You can find the link in the description box below, but uh, I love it. I just, I love being able to wear this. It makes me feel brave. Right, I'm gonna get changed into uh, these outfits to kind of see how they look when they're all put together. Again, don't don't judge me. I know it's not a fashion show, but but there's something about looking cute in your outfit that's just gives you that extra little bit of motivation, you know? So uh, this is gonna be the starting outfit. I'm probably gonna get changed halfway through because I'll get cold and wet. But look at my socks. I love them. They're so cute. They make my legs look super wonky. But I don't care because they're really nice. And, and here, let me just put the microphone in here. And this is gonna rain the entire time, or at least half the time. Got this cute little rain jacket. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm into it. 
Plant Based Adventures is asking, how's it going with writing a book? <sighs> you know, <laughs> writing a book is the one thing that like keeps me awake at night. I really, it's like one of my biggest dreams in life is to write a book and I am working on it. And I now just need to find the time and the motivation to actually write it. So if you want me to write a book, please give me some encouragement in the comments because maybe that's what I need. So to answer your question, it's on my mind. Let me just try one more thing. How about this one? Yeah, this one's a bit more sportsy, isn't it? What do you think? Hmm? What do you think about me running that ultra marathon? Is it a bad idea? Situation two. What do you think free spirits like us will do 50 years from now, like when we will be old? Great question. <laughs> I have no idea is the short answer, but I have hopes. So I think like it's very easy to be a free spirit when you're in your 20s, even like in your early 30s, when you don't have as many commitments or responsibilities in life, right? Obvious. But I refuse to believe that you have to give up your free spirit in order to like settle down or become an adult or like have a family. I think you can always cultivate that free spirit within you. And that's what I plan to do in my own life. I think in 50 years from now, those of us who are now 20, 30, maybe even 40, in 50 years from now, our lives will look very different from the generation of our grandparents, I believe. I mean, the world is changing so fast, we don't even know what's coming for us. <laughs> the point is, I think we have tasted a very different kind of life. We have tasted very different possibilities of what we can do with our lives. And I really hope that if you feel like you have that free spirit within you, that you don't for a second believe the narrative that you have to crush it or suppress it in order to grow up. No, I think that some of the best people that I've met have been older people who have cultivated their free and wild spirit and who are still doing amazing things well into their 70s and 80s and even beyond. I once ran a marathon with a guy who was like in his late 80s, who was running a marathon in every country in the world. Yeah, in his late 80s. What a superstar. That's who I want to be when I grow up. Okay, I think it's time to start packing. Because I gotta leave in about an hour. <laughs> a question from Shinnis. Confidence, how? I can never even go on a holiday by myself. Any advice and were you always like this? Um, wow, that's a really big and loaded question. So I think let's, let's start by talking about confidence. <laughs> um, I think you just, what works for me is not picturing everybody naked. It's none of those tricks that you hear from like motivational speakers. I think what for me, what it boils down to in terms of being a confident person is being optimistic. Like I wasn't always optimistic. I, when I was a teenager, I think I was more of a pessimist. I had a hard time believing that things will work out for me because I wasn't a bit of a I had a hard time growing up, let's, let's just put it that way. I moved to a completely different country when I was 12. I moved from Poland to the UK. I barely spoke the language. I was living in a house with someone that I really hated and I couldn't wait to move out. Um, I went through a lot of mental health struggles when I was a teenager and I think I was, I just, yeah, I struggled to believe that things would work out eventually. but. And I think paradoxically, that's what made me a very optimistic person in the end, because I did manage to get out of that, you know, really painful living situation and turn my life around in some ways and ended up living a life that I absolutely love every single day. So I think what it boils down to with confidence is for me, just being an optimistic person. You know, when you believe that things will work out, when you believe that life is great and it's worth living, then I think naturally you become more confident because, well, then why wouldn't you? <laughs> if you're an optimist, then almost by definition, you have to be confident. Does that make sense? You know, with this ultra race, I was like, I went through a whole mental journey. <laughs> a whole mental journey. When I found out it was gonna rain, I was like, this close 
to withdrawing. I was like this close to being like this. I don't want to run in the rain. This is going to be my second 100K race in the rain. I don't want to do it. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, this is why I have to do it. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna rain this, I'm not gonna let this stupid rain stop me. I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. So here we are. <sighs> Goodbye. Emma Tan is asking, anything new in your romantic life? <laughs> York is like, it's me. I'm her romantic life. <laughs> yes, there is much new in my romantic life. I've actually been toying with the idea of doing intentional celibacy for a year, like intentionally, deliberately going celibate for a year, rejecting all romantic, physical, all kinds of non-platonic relationships. And you can hear a little bit more about that decision, what led me to it and how I kind of see it happening on my other channel, Unplugged. I'm gonna link the video up here somewhere and also down below in the description box. So if you're interested, go and check it out. All right, I'm gonna go pack Vilk's food and some of the fuel that I'll be using on my race. Traveling on the go is asking, do you recommend hiring a team to produce better videos? It depends on the stage of your YouTube journey, I would say. So if you're just starting out, like when I was six years ago, I do not recommend investing heavily into hiring a team. I think if you're just starting out, it's really good for you to dive in real deep and learn all the skills that maybe eventually other people will have on your team. Like, you know, when I started out, I was doing all the filming, all the editing, all the all the mundane, all the fun stuff all by myself. So I learned how to do all those things. And then when, you know, someone came on my team, they, I was able to kind of like tell them what I wanted, what I was expecting. And I had a good idea of what that would even mean and entail. However, if you're at a stage of your YouTube journey where you're already making money, where the channel is paying for itself, where you can afford to hire a team and where you can see that, you know, your ideas are working out, then sure, go for it. 100%. First, identify what's taking up the most of your time that you could delegate to someone else and go from there. Want to be a travel is asking, what one piece of advice do you have for people just starting off their vlogging adventures? Number one, decide why you're doing this. Like, are you vlogging to keep your family and friends updated? Or are you vlogging because you want to make that your job, your lifestyle, like figure out, figure out what your goal is and go from there. And you know, if your goal is to make that your lifestyle, make that your job, if that's something that you want to do for a living, then I would say the most important thing is to ask yourself, what can I offer to the world that hasn't been done yet in the capacity that I can do it? What is the new thing that I can bring to YouTube and to people, right? Go from there. The meat or me. Aw, thank you. You're so cute. <laughs> so the reason I'm bringing all of his food is because I'm gonna go run that ultra marathon in the mountains, but we're also gonna stay in the mountains for a few days. We're making it into a whole trip. Okay, now I'm gonna pack my fuel for the race, which is going to consist of Nuts, tasty dates, energy gels. Next question. Mr. G is asking, how did you learn to train Vilk so well and do you work with him daily? Yes, Vilk and I train daily. Every single day, no fail, sometimes twice a day. I get a lot of compliments on his training, which is really nice and that's definitely encouraging to see. Um, but there's no one way that I trained him. I explored so many different ways, so many different routes of training. I worked with a couple of different trainers in the US and in Poland. And you know, I think like the most important thing at the end of the day is training the dog that's in front of you. You know your dog best. I can't tell you how to train your dog because I don't know your dog. I don't know what he or she responds to the best, right? But also the second most important thing and I think this probably applies to all dogs, especially ones that you have from when they're small, is playing with your dog because 
I found that playing with Vilk every single day, like 15 minutes, half an hour a day, is the thing that made our relationship so strong. So I play tug of war with him, I play ball with him. We're playing always, all the time. That's how I've taught him everything that he knows is through play. That's made recall easier, that's made healing easier, that's made being in public places easier. I'm not saying Vilk is a perfect dog, he's not. We're currently working on, you know, his reactivity to other dogs and kind of making sure that he knows how to stay calm when there's other male dogs around. And that's a little bit hard, you know, because he's an intact male and he's a teenager, but we're working on it. So I'd say, yeah, train the dog in front of you and establish a foundation by just having fun with your dog, playing with them. Okay, I'm all packed. So uh, it's time to go. I have like a five hour drive ahead of me all the way to the mountains. So I'm gonna answer some more questions on the way. You wanna go? You wanna go? Where are we gonna go, huh? Let's go. You ready? I think you're ready. The next question is from Diana who is asking, do you ever get lonely? And the simple, straightforward answer is, I don't really get lonely. Um, I don't know what it is exactly. I can't quite pinpoint it, but I really like being alone. And I love the company of other people. I love hanging out with good people. I love my friends. I love my family. It's not that I'm like a loner, but I'm just very, really happy being on my own as well, you know? Okay, my next stop is a dog hotel. That's where Vilk is gonna be staying while I run the Ultra. Um, unfortunately, he can't run with me. It's a little bit too far. And of course I can't leave him on his own because I'll be out there for about 20 hours. So while we're waiting in traffic, let's check out another question. Maria is asking, do you feel pressure or behind in life because you're not married yet? Um, you know what? I used to be married and I think since then I've come to the conclusion that marriage is not necessary for happiness or even to have a healthy relationship. It is just, it's, it's a formal contract, a civil contract that we sign with someone, but it doesn't really mean that you're guaranteed to be happy or that your relationship is guaranteed to be good. So no, I guess I don't really go by these like social milestones anymore to make me feel like I'm doing well in life. I think the most important milestone that should tell you whether you're doing well in life is how you feel about your life. <laughs> There's nothing else that matters as much, you know? Um, so no, I don't feel like I'm behind in life. In fact, I feel like life is great. <laughs> okay, Vilk has been dropped off and I'm about to go pick up my race bib. In the meantime, one more question. And this is a good one. Solma is asking, where do you see yourself at 40? Do you think you will regret not having kids? Regret is a funny thing. I mean, I don't know if I can regret something that I never wanted. I'm sure that at some point in my life when I'm older, I'll have thoughts where I'll wonder what it might have been like to have had kids, but I don't think I'll regret it because I just know that my life would have changed so dramatically in so many ways that I wouldn't have loved that I just can't see myself regretting it. But in terms of where I see myself when I'm 40, that's only like seven years away. It's really not that far. <laughs> I don't know, I guess I just hope that I continue doing things that I love. I hope that I continue to surround myself with good people and good friends and yeah, continue to just love life. I don't know what I'll be doing job wise. I might not be doing YouTube anymore. I hope to venture more into documentary filmmaking. I hope to be able to keep running long distances and going on adventures. So yeah, more of the same but bigger and better. <laughs> so yeah. All right, let's go pick up the race bib.
This here is my race number and this here is the elevation profile of this race. The elevation profile, in case you don't know, is basically um, a little map telling you how much climbing and downhill running you have to do. And this race is 96 kilometers and you're climbing about five mountains, basically. 5,000 meters elevation gain, which is just stupid. Okay, one more question. Paper Finger Cuts is asking, any recommendations for people who are trying to start running? Gear, yeah, training, motivation. Yeah, I would say if you want to start running, you need to find your why. Like, why are you trying to start running? And then tap into that as much as you possibly can. Start slow, don't go sprinting, you know, immediately. Build up your endurance over time. That means slow and, you know, peaceful running essentially and that just takes a little bit of time to build so another thing that I would recommend is finding your favorite place to go running in I started out running on roads and I really didn't enjoy it that much I mean I did for a very short time and then it got really really dull so then I found trails and running in nature on a different trail every time just made running so much more exciting and fun for me and um, that's kind of how I fell in love with running. It was the trails that did it for me, the connection with nature. And by the way, if you do end up trying trail running, just remember that you're never gonna run as fast as you will on a smooth road surface, and that is totally fine. That's what trail running is all about, taking it slow, having fun, having a great time. I hope that helped. <laughs> I'm gonna take that advice to heart tonight. <laughs> So thank you for asking a very pertinent question. The ultra marathon started at 1 a.m. in complete pitch dark. And you know, there's something about running in the dark that just makes you feel like you're in such an amazing state of flow. So we were off to a pretty good start. It was gonna be a very long race though. Anyway, here's another question that someone asked. Lord Rubik's P. Do you still go barefoot or are you done with that lifestyle? Well, I am running this ultra marathon in barefoot minimalist shoes, so I guess I am still doing it. Okay, I'm taking it easy for a few minutes. And Sam Kletz was asking, how did you get started running ultras? Um, I, I guess I just wanted to see if I, if I could run such a long distance. So I signed up for my first ultra three years ago um, in Turkey, and that was 63 kilometers. And I ran it and I really loved it. Um, so that's how I got started. And then I just kind of kept increasing the distance. And uh, I've done several ultra marathons by now, but uh, there's still so much to go. My big goal for this year is to do a hundred miler. That's a hundred miles in one go. I know it sounds ridiculous. Anyway, that's a bit of an uphill, so gonna keep walking. I know that to most people running an ultra distance might seem totally crazy, but there is something so liberating about it, so simple and pure, and I just absolutely, absolutely love it. Anyway, Meg and Flaherty asked me, what's your advice for a 22 year old woman about to embark on her first solo trip? My answer is just go, just do it. It's gonna feel scary and awkward at first, but you're gonna make it. It's gonna be the start of a very new journey in your life and I'm not just talking about travel. After 18 hours, I finally made it to the finish line. 96 kilometers, 62 miles. A crazy amount of elevation, but I made it. I made it. Wow. I really love running, trust me. <laughs> but I'm also super happy to be back from that whole trip and just in one place for a little while. Anyway, we've got a few more questions that I wanna answer from you guys. And Marius Tor was asking, is Everest on your list? Next mountain to climb? <laughs> it's a really interesting one because, you know, I am very tempted to um, go climb a very tall mountain. I mean, I've done the tallest mountain in South America, Aconcagua, I've done Kilimanjaro, tallest mountain in Africa, I've done the tallest mountain in, um, Antarctica, Mount Vincent, and quite possibly later this year, I'll be running up the tallest mountain in Australia. But Everest, you know, I really 
love the idea of climbing Everest, but I don't love the reality of it, which is that you have to have help, right? You can't do it as a solo project, really. Um, the way that Everest works now is that it's very, very commercialized. You have to go with a group, which can be fun. Okay, sure. But you also have to go with guys. You have to, like, it's a whole, it's very commercial. And, you know, I think I just really love the purity of being able to run long distances on my own, using only my own strength and power and endurance, not having to rely on anyone else. So I have a feeling that even though I would probably really enjoy the climb, I might find myself really not enjoying the kind of commercial aspect of climbing bigger peaks. But who knows? If the right opportunity arose, I would probably take it. So <laughs> call me out on it if I ever end up climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> It is a Sunday morning. I got my coffee ready. Oh my God, I love Sunday mornings. <sighs> okay, Theo is asking, do you have any guilty pleasures like trash TV or unhealthy food? <laughs> I have so many guilty pleasures, you guys. So my favorite food is pizza, and I guess that would get classified as a guilty pleasure. My other favorite food is ice cream. So there we go. And yeah, I am, <laughs> I really love watching The Office, The American Office. It's like my favorite show. So I will usually sneak in like an episode or two every couple of days, because I just find it so freaking hilarious. <laughs> so good. If you're an Office fan, let me know. And one last question for this Q&A. It's Charlene is asking, where do you imagine your future house? More on that in the upcoming episodes. <laughs> so I'll just give you a, a tiny little sneak preview. I have been in negotiations about some land and some other cool things for a little while now. I haven't been able to talk about it because as you can imagine, it's pretty sensitive and, you know, and I also don't want to jinx it in a way, but the house or living situation that's coming up in my near future is um i'm, I'm not gonna tell you just yet but it's really exciting and it's about to happen and in a few weeks from now you'll get to see it i'm so excited to share it with you guys so i hope you enjoyed this q a thank you for all the questions and i'll see you in the next video